Welcome, I'm Rory, and in this video we're going to talk about colour correction and how to colour correct your videos. So I'm going to be using the built-in colour correction tools within Final Cut Pro. Uh, if you prefer to use a certain plugin, something like Color Finale or DaVinci Resolve, or if you use a different program like Premiere or Vegas or something like that, the, the workflow is the same. Uh, your tools are going to look different, your uh, interface is going to look different, but the process should be pretty much the same. Having said that, there are many different ways to color correct, like a lot of things in filmmaking and videography. This is the way that I prefer. These are the methods that work well for me and the methods I use in any of my professional work that I do. It's by no means the only way or even the right way to do it. What is color correction? Uh, there's often a lot of confusion around color correction and color grading. Although they can sort of overlap, they have very different purposes. Uh, color grading is all about the creative, artistic, stylistic, look or aesthetic that you're applying to your video uh, as a sort of final finishing touch to give it the final look you know something like the orange and teal look that's very popular or you know perhaps you're trying to play with contrast or whatever it is that to create that look of that video color correction on the other hand is a process we need to do before we grade and the idea is to correct those clips or your video clips so that they look as close to reality as possible um, so you're trying to get rid of any lighting issues or color issues that exist within your shots from when you were shooting. Really color correction can be broken down into three main things. Uh, we're looking at exposure of our shots, the saturation of our shots and the white balance. If we color correct properly, when we do get to the grading process, it makes that process a lot easier and it means that the look is gonna be consistent across all of our clips. If we haven't color corrected first, when you apply a LUT or a grade or whatever it is to your footage, you're gonna have inconsistencies between each of your shots. Also important to bear in mind that the amount and extent to which you have to color correct and the process you use to color correct is gonna vary depending on the camera you're shooting and the settings you're using to shoot. For instance, I'm shooting on a Sony a7 III and I'm shooting everything on S-Log2. Now S-Log2 tends to be a very desaturated, washed out, low contrast, sort of flat profile, which I prefer because it gives you more details in the, in the shadows and I think in the end, once you've corrected and graded that footage, it looks better than say, Cine4. Every camera is gonna need a slightly different level of care or level of detail to get the correction to work and look good. With all that said, let's jump into Final Cut here and have a look at how we do it. I've got six clips that I've pulled into the timeline here. These are just some clips of Jacob's skiing. So first thing I wanna do is just close my browser here. I'm gonna open up my inspector and then the color tab, which is this one here. You can also get that by hitting Command 6. And that will bring that up. And then using Command 7, I'm gonna open this window here, which gives me a vast array of options from histrionas, vector scopes, waveforms that all give you information about the color in your video. I like to use the waveform and I like to use the RGB parade under channels here. So if we look at the RGB parade here, you can see we've got a red channel, green channel, and a blue channel. And the waveforms within these represent the amount of each color within your video. Uh, 100 is true white, so something that's exposed fully or overexposed, and zero is true black, or something that's uh, not at all exposed or underexposed. Color wheels gives you four wheels. You've got your master wheel here, shadows, highlights, and midtones, and within each of those wheels, you have a color dropper in the middle that is gonna adjust the hue. You've got a saturation slider on the left that's gonna adjust the saturation and you've got an exposure slider on the right that's gonna adjust the exposure. Below that, you've also got a few other controls for temperature and tint, as well as some manual controls that uh, relate to each wheel. And as you affect something down here, you'll see that same effect applied up in the wheels and vice versa. So I start at the start of the first clip. I'm usually gonna start with the saturation. I start with saturation because saturation also affects exposure and you'll see that as you play with the saturation the exposure in your clips will change too so if you look at the bottom of this blue waveform here as i increase the exposure that blue waveform actually moves up as well so i like to start with uh, the saturation i'm going to do it here so i can get a precise value uh, for s log 2 footage 
I think 1.6 seems to be as close to sort of reality or what looks good as possible. Now just to save myself a bit of time, I'm actually gonna copy that using Command C, I'm gonna select all my other clips, and using Command Shift V, I'm gonna paste the color wheel onto all my other clips so that already saturation is done for all of my clips. So now that I know my saturation is where I want it to be, I can start playing with exposure. And the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna start with the shadows, then I'm gonna play with the highlights, and then if I need to, I can adjust the midtones. So first things first, let's bring our shadows, which is the bottom part of the waveform here down and bring those closer towards zero. I wanna make sure they don't go past zero here because then they're gonna be cropped and the black is gonna be beyond black. We're gonna to start to lose detail within our shadows. So I've got those pretty close to zero. In this case, that looks pretty good to me. Uh, and then I'm gonna look at the top of my waveform here and in this case, I actually think where it is right now is about perfect. I don't, if I bring that all the way up to 100, you see that's gonna to be too bright on the snow there. And if I go any lower, it's gonna to start to get too dark. So I'm gonna leave those where they are. Not all shadows should be at zero and not all highlights should be at 100. It's really up to you and your knowledge of color and things. And, and with more experience, you'll learn where different sort of things line up on an exposure scale but to help you there's a really great uh, chart that Ansel Adams created I'll put a link to that in the description and, and I'll flash it up on the screen here now and this is a really easy way to sort of learn where on an exposure scale different things and different lighting conditions should line up cool so now that I'm happy with my exposure I need to start looking at white balance and any sort of color casting that's going on in here and the way I'm doing this is I'm looking at my RGB parade and primarily I'm looking at the highlights and I'm trying to see do the tops of these peaks in red, green and blue, do they line up? In this case you can see they're already pretty much aligned and that tells me there's a good balance within the whites and that's really what white balance means. If I was to take my color picker here and move it right down towards the blue within the highlights, now if you look at my video you can see it's very blue, it's got that sort of blue tint to it and that's reflected here with the rays in the blue uh, waveform. In this case, pretty happy with where that is. We can do the same thing for the shadows, and this is more for sort of color carts. Usually it's a sort of bluish tint that you'll find when you're skiing because of the reflection from the blue sky, uh, and you can see that here. So there's less, uh, or the blue is higher on the waveform than the red and the green, and that tells me there's actually more blue in the shadows. So to fix that, I'm gonna add a bit of orange and that's gonna bring that blue down. I'm adding orange because if you look on the color wheel here, orange is opposite blue. So now you can see all of these troughs are lined up, all of these peaks are lined up, and our exposure is looking pretty good. Uh, you also do need to use your own judgment, you know, use your eye and your eye gets better with time and practice and training, but does that clip look right to you? Sometimes you can follow these steps and have everything lined up and it won't look right and then you need to think about the lighting conditions on the day. For instance, if you're shooting at sunset and there's a lot of orange in the sky, you would expect to see more orange in the highlights. Um, conversely, if you're shooting at night or in the dark time, you're gonna expect more blue in both the shadows and highlights. So now that I've done this clip, I'm gonna use the shortcuts J, K, and L, L being play, to have a look through and just watch that clip and I'll use J to go back through it the other way to make sure that that exposure and everything looks right throughout the clip. And in this case, if I go back to about here, and I can use the arrows just to go through a few frames, you can see that at this point in the video, we've dropped below zero. So perhaps my exposure was slightly off there, so I'm gonna bring that back up. And also we've got a bit of a sort of orange cast coming into the shadow, so I might ease off on that orange just a touch, balance those out. That's looking pretty good now. The mid-tones are represented by the middle part of the waveform here. You can see there's more blue, or the blues in the mid-tones are higher than that same point of the greens and that same point of the reds. So again, I could push a bit more sort of orange into the mid-tones there and that would help balance those curves out. I'm not going to get them to line up perfectly because that will look terrible. Um, again, I have to think about the lighting conditions of the day, but I can add a little bit of orange and that's going to give me uh, a little bit more warmth in those midterms, and I'm pretty happy with where that is. So let's just turn that off so you can see the before and on, and now you can see 
before the color correction, after the color correction. Cool, so let's move on to the next clip. So this last clip here, I picked this one because this one was taken at sunset. And so, as I mentioned earlier, the exposure levels and the color levels are gonna be different from a normal clip. What you'll notice immediately is that it's too dark for a sunset. There's, the shadows are too dark. Sunset light is a lot softer than this. And so I'm gonna to need to bring up that exposure and stay up around the 10, 15 mark for this particular clip. I also know that sunset is usually the light is usually a lot more orange so in this case i might just leave that orange in the highlights just to give it that look that i know is more realistic uh, and here you can see that in the rgb parade midtones generally i try to avoid using unless i have to an example of when i might need to use a midtone is if i have balanced my highlights and my shadows and it's still too light or too dark, that is when the mid-tone sliders are gonna come into play. So I'll use this clip here as an example. If I bring these all the way to the, the top of the white and the bottom of the black, uh, assuming I wanted to make this brighter, if it looked too dark to me, uh, but I couldn't because I would be peaking my whites, that is when the mid-tone slider comes in because moving this will not affect the top and bottom of your clip. It will sort of affect everything in between. So if you've, corrected your clip but you're still not getting enough uh, or too much contrast or not enough contrast you can affect that with the mid-tone slider it also has a massive effect on skin tone something you don't have to deal with so much in skiing uh, but it can help by adding a little bit of orange to bring you more realistic skin tones through your shots so that's it uh, that is my color correcting workflow in final cut uh, i hope that's been useful it's quite a rough overview it's a lot of information to take in and I think the best way to get good at color correcting is just to go out and do it. You know, take a few clips, practice it, play around with it, get used to the tools available within your software or your system and really understand uh, the process and then the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think and I'll see you in the next one.